2015 Infinity QX70. Today's video topic is going to be on this screen over here, the display, the multifunction screen. Keep in mind, my vehicle is the most fully loaded for the year, so it might have a few features that are not present in the vehicle in front of you. Regardless, upon request, I decided to engage uh, some of my viewers, supporters, I really appreciate you guys, and showcase the features of the most advanced or the most involved screen that you could get in this model year. So, let's get to it. Start the vehicle. It comes alive. Make sure the volume is all the way down. This is not on auto, this is auto. But I wanted to keep the fan speed low so so you could at least hear me okay so i'm going to use info for example as a way to just showcase the various ways to control this so info button and to control this to select things you can move it using this scroll key scroll wheel clockwise counterclockwise you can use the buttons up down I find that the buttons are a little sensitive. You can see sometimes it just jumps one or two. If you wanted to pick something, say fuel economy, hit enter. And then to come out of that, just hit this back button. And I'll go back to info because I'd like to showcase a safer way, they say. So you could also use this over here to scroll down, up, and if you were to pick something, this is an enter button as well. Just push it in, feel economy, and it shows you whatever you have going on. And to go back, this is the return key. It takes you back to home. But what if you want it to be fully, fully safe from there without reaching over and touching the info or pressing the info button? The way you do it, just come here, that enter button, push it and hold. And you go into info fuel economy and back you go but there's yet another trick it's a little backwards if you think about it but this is a touch screen but to engage it to start it you have to go to engage the <laughs> to use it you have to engage one of these buttons first so again info and now we can select whatever you want here and it's a nice touch screen it works with see that back button over there and uh, it's it's a little cumbersome if you ask me and i'd rather not deal with it it's so far too i suppose it just depends on how you configure it i feel like you get more control with these with, uh, with the keypad so first thing is show you how to control the screen then the next part i've got my setup over here is going to just showcase whatever we have and it's one of those videos, I've never really done something like this. I've done a video when I was uh, working on something more directly like the camera, um, conf comfort settings, but I've been requested and so this is one of those videos. I I'll have to start with an apology. I don't know how long it's gonna be yet. It's going to be as long as it needs to be because I want to be thorough in my presentation. So I'll just basically show you every single button and we'll see what they do, starting with some of the most guess some of the more harmless ones uh, let's start with the right side going back this way I think that has that offers more so this I don't think we really have a question about that this is audio stuff and I can show you what it looks like since the volume is all the way down AM FM Hit it again, satellite, well, FM2, I'd forgotten that. Then XM1, XM2, XM3, quite a lot. Uh, then we've got this, in case you have a disc, which you put down there. I'm not going to change my camera angle for this. Then auxiliary Bluetooth audio. And we do have an aux port, don't we? Oh, lost all the money. No, we have USB though. So that's one way, something else you could work. So that's it for that. Back doesn't really do anything here. Voice, these modern vehicles, it needs a lot of training, but let's try it. No route has been set. Oh, 
No route has been set. Okay. If you've set some kind of a route, I guess you just push that and maybe select one, two, three. I'm, I'm going to avoid using the the steering wheel over there because I think just for the sake of keeping the camera here and having both my hands available, this is for your hazard lights. Then this here is for your screen. I actually have a, um, a video on this screen on, you know, light on, light off with the FX50, but watch this. Day. So now, right now it's an auto. Look at that, it says auto. But if I push it, I'm forcing it to nighttime glare. So let me do this, leave it on auto. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the headlights. Okay, so I turned on the headlights and you can see what happened there. So if I come here, let's go back to status so that we can at least see something. If I come back here and push this, I'm now forcing it to daytime. You see the sun over there? So that's one of the things. And you can play with this setting. You can actually change how bright it is. Like right now, I can change the brightness. You can take it back to automatic. and. It, it might be a little counterintuitive as to why it's darker at night, but the assumption is that if it's dark all over around you, there's no point in this screen giving you so much glare. So we're going to keep it a little dimmer and you can change the amount of brightness even in the night mode, okay? So I'm going to turn off the headlights. There you go. So this is again, auto, I'll leave it at that. And then we've got status under status. It just tells you, it just tells you what you're going to see on the screen. And the three, three options or four, there's the number one, it shows you um, your HVAC settings, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Two, your GPS status or what you're trying to do. This is more navigation. Three, fuel economy. That's depressing, don't drive with that. <laughs> oh, you could, it's fine. And then I'm trying to remember, I feel like there's, a, yes, this does default to audio, but I felt like there was a way you could change it. Now let's go back to info, which you saw me play with earlier. Fuel economy shows you what you have, which you could already see this in that mini screen, right? I re already reset the stuff. I've been driving like a maniac and you can see the history. That's what it's been ever since I've had it. So 20-ish city driving. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. Then, I don't want to reset it. There you go, I knew it would ask you at least. So no, I do not want to do that. Go back, tire pressure. These appear when you start driving and it's just going to be something like 35, 35, 35, 35. I'm not going to play with that right now, but I'll play with the units. Uh, kilopascals if you're in the metric system or if you're a scientist and you just like to complicate things back and out maintenance this is where you set your memory for you know set put, um, set your reminders for engine oil oil filter tire or other it could be tire we use that for tire rotation so let me show you how this works right now this I'm going to have to do another video once we actually approach the times but so enter engine oil the reminder is on. So right now I'm at about 2,000. Once I get to 5,000, this bar turns red and it pops. Every time I start the car, it will send a reminder. If you do not want it on, you just turn this thing off. And whenever it gets to that mileage, it's just going to it's just going to pass, but it will never send me an uh, you know an alert on the home screen. I'll keep that on. on. Sometimes what I do is that because engine oil and oil filter usually this is a service you do at the same time what i do is i just one of them goes like this one maybe i'll just uh, turn the reminder off or i'll leave this one at 5000 and then for oil since i drive v8s see what i was talking about with the buttons up down cursor keys is that um with the oil filter i set that for every 1000 miles so i can remember to check tire this is tire rotation other reminder pick whatever you want alignment maybe and right now the for the longest distance you can get is 18,000, but i believe this is 15 right now yep set for 15 and actually let me show you how far it goes 
looks like there. Okay, so that's, and resetting the distance, this is what it does. I don't mind doing it for this one here. See the, where the bar is? Just hit reset, goes all the way to zero. So right after you service, you do that, okay? Okay, that's it for maintenance. Where am I? Um, let's see, I might put my hand over. Well, actually, let me do that. <laughs> see how much information it's sharing. Ah, oh, not too bad. Okay, so when I do that, it shows you the camera, you know, Highway 70, current road name, not in the, ma uh, the map data, and it gives you the coordinates send. I don't want to give my coordinates to my house. So we're going to go back. Okay, good. Uh, traffic info, I don't think it's going to tell me anything because I'm not really traveling. Oh, there you go. Nearby. So info on route. There's no route because I'm not driving anywhere. Nearby traffic info. Oh, in 18 miles. Indiana 63 closed. Interesting. I rarely ever use that. Traffic congestion. Actually, this is really nice. I might use that. Okay, back. Weather info. <laughs> uh, current weather and forecasts nearby weather info indianapolis i'm like one and a half hours from there you can select another city i suppose that's not bad uh let's go to indiana first well i'll keep i'll keep that because my city of Terre Haute is not represented here <laughs> warnings and watches nothing okay and this weather map let's see that local map indianapolis i'm just curious what that says um, i don't see anything yet i suppose i would need i do have the satellite thing on for now because you saw the satellite radio right yeah legend yeah gives you a definition of what's going on rain freezing rain snow fog um there's nothing whatever we're experiencing is not there i suppose this would be an interesting screen to play with in the winter uh national map well yeah that might be interesting if the legend is still on okay there you go see now there's rain on the coasts and of course, my Pacific nor uh, Northwest people. So it's semi-accurate. You could pick some other city. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's about it. Temperature map. Let's do national so that we can just kind of jump at it. Oh, this is really cool. It gives you the temperatures in certain places. My peeps in Florida. Oh, look at that. Is that um, West Coast? You guys are getting it. 87 degrees, 96, 97, New Mexico. You guys okay? Um, and, you know, 48, 44. Not too bad, really. That's really cool. Then you can pick another city. Warnings map. I think maybe, yeah, I think this is going to be nice. No route has been set. I touched this by mistake. There's a warning right here, and that's other warning. Great. What is that, wind? Then there's this right here, thunderstorm, I'm guessing. It's some sort of green. Warning versus watch. So the bold, the deep colors are, okay, watch, warning. Hurricane typhoon, heat warning. Okay. Road condition. Let's do local map. I think it's... Nope, nothing interesting in Indiana. Let's go national. Flooded, slippery. This is pretty good, honestly. It's just that sometimes using my phone might be faster than all this stuff. Okay, so I think that does it for weather info. M map update. I don't wish to update it. It just tells me what version I have. So there it is. DVD update. Oh, is that how you do it? I, I don't want to mess with that. Let's just say... I don't want to mess with that. Then others, there you go, info. Navigation version, GPS position, voice recognition. User guide. Then you can do a practice. Um, 
for example you know it, it helps you on placing calls i did mention earlier that sometimes these are a little finicky with regards to hearing you so let's do a practice this test will analyze your speech the system will prompt you to say a phone number after you say the number the system will provide feedback to improve voice recognition when you are ready this. push the talk switch the talk switch is on the steering wheel after the tone please say the phone number on the display 800-662-6200 800-662-6200 Digits correctly recognized. Please check the analysis of your speech for possible improvements. Okay. Select try again or done when finished. You know what? I'm going to try again. You know, let's just call it done for now. And then I'll come back later and do all that stuff. So it teaches you how to use the, um, the stuff properly. For example, to like, place a phone call, push the talk switch. The system responds with, please say call, followed by a phone book name. Oh. So if you link to your Bluetooth phone on it. So yeah, there you go. Want to do the practice, help them Say speak. commands when there are minimal background sounds. Say voice commands clearly. Avoid talking slow or with long pauses. Say commands after the tone. So the basics. Okay, well... Yeah, that kind of covers it for info, right? So the next thing I'd like to go for is setting. Uh, we've got, so phone, I don't know. I, oh, well, I know why, because my both phones, this one is not, I don't have Bluetooth on right now. So, but if I do Bluetooth on, let's see what happens. Um, Bluetooth, let's turn that on. You'll see that turn, maybe. There you go. Turned it on. I'm. Yeah, that's you know one way to call. I'll leave it on for now. So navigation. You can change the settings. Address book. Which do I have anything here? I feel like I. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. What I did is this. Address book. Stored locations. Stored routes. Stored tracking. I think I actually have something stored. Let me see. Whoop. Well, that's what I meant to do. Yeah, it's good. It's a little trippy. He doesn't really know 100% where home is. I usually prefer to not save my home location on here just because it's safety paranoia. And you could avoid areas. You could delete all the stored items, transfer an address book from somewhere else, map view. You could pick a 2D map. Uh, bird eye view, this is what I usually like. Split and bird eye. There you go, so that's what that looks like. Let's go back. No, it's not going to go back there. So settings, uh, where were we? Navigation, map view. You know what? Let's do split 2D. Why would you want two of the same? There you go. Okay, then, so, I guess, navigation. Let me change the map view yet again. <laughs> Bird eye view. And I believe there was a way you could change it. And you can go back to map menu by this, doing that. You know, these are locations. So there's map, there's navigation, and then there's GPS. It gets a little interesting. So we've got that, navigation again. Um, map view instead of picking something there view settings intersections turns list do you want it to tell you auto split map you know what do you want to see when you're navigating and that's what it defaults to you could get a full map if you wanted to fuel economy that's interesting i guess if you're doing uber city driving i think this one's pretty cool for trips sometimes you combine all that Map orientation heading up. You could change that too, huh? Short turn list on freeway automatically, yes. Map color. Ooh. Cool. Warm. See it changing. Traffic emphasis. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. I like that. 
but I'll leave it at cool for now. You know, let me do traffic emphasis for a while, see if anything changes. No, cool. Cool is just good enough. Bird, vi bird view angle, you can change the angle. If I remember, you could do it this way. <laughs> all right, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, show all freeway exits on route. Or just show the one you, you're trying to turn on. I think that's a good way. Okay, so that's back. A lot of settings hidden in here. So one thing you guys might have noticed is that when I was giving my um, directions on my ways to control it earlier, I said you could scroll. Can you see that? Zoom in, zoom out. You And you can see the scale over there. I think 1 16th is usually the standard. You could go forward backward this way we're turning or here's an interesting one now this is where this becomes important because you can do that you can kind of go sideways and now I've kind of lost where oh there's a the highway there you go finally well let's just go back can't remember how you oh I know this is how you reorient reorient Nope, it's just telling you where north is. Never mind, forget what I just said there. But you can zoom in, zoom out, you know, up, down, since you already, since I selected this. Oh, here, here you go. Whole lot of settings, you know? That's it for the map. Go back to setting again, navigation. We were just at the view icons do you want a restaurant to show up do you want a gas station to show up do you want a hotel there's a gas station pretty close so what i'm gonna do is go back and map that's all the shortcut that's what i've been doing all this time there you go speedway right there okay so let's go back to setting we're still in navigation brother that's still the top what icons do you want to show up right gas station i think that's in that's a cool one you want that showing because gas stations really don't really move or change much neither do hotels so it depends on on you, when you're in a trip and you're trying to do that or trying to get somewhere maybe that's more important and this it tells this tells your voice guidance display guidance time calculation do you want the volume on do you want it off traffic announcements do you want that voice guidance settings intersection guidance settings uh, do you want to tell you? Yes, you do. Well, I do. Voice announcements. Full, concise. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Full would be like old school GPS units. It's got so many settings hidden in there. Small turn error on map or you don't want it. Estimated time to your destination or a waypoint. Destination just makes more sense to me and others so many menu items set average speeds auto reroute hmm. auto i think yeah what was that about honestly i'm not 100 percent sure on how to use that let's see changes road speed for estimated time of arrival oh there you go i like that interesting i feel like it should be the other way change the time of arrival based on road speed but what I'm looking at as a road speed, that's interesting. I need to play with that a little more. I rarely use the navigation in the, the vehicles. Others is usually the end, so we're done with guidance settings. Then we got route settings. Guidance is how do you want to be told as you go? Basic route type, this fastest, there's usually avoiding highways, avoiding tollways, minimize freeway, shortest route, fastest route. What do you, how do you want to get there, you know? So shortest is not usually the fastest. I know sometimes that looks like it because this might be short distance, the mileage, but this one is faster because yes, it's an extra five miles, 10 miles, but you're on the highway. So the speed limits are higher. Minimize freeway, that takes you in some deep country roads, depending on where you live, of course. Okay, route settings, traffic info settings. Use traffic info, show incidents on the map, blink red, traffic flow, uh, traffic announcements. It's either on or off, so I'm not going to play with that too much. 13, do you see all that? Weather info setting, 
<laughs> this is the one that usually tells you high wind alert. <laughs> so you can either display. I have one of these for um, one of these for my Infinity M56, M56. So that's going to be a little more concise as to how it comes on. Right now it's a pretty calm day. It's going to be useless. This is not going to change much. But you can um, you can get an alert for watch, a warning, or you can turn the voice announcements off. And I think that's yeah. You just need to see what's that other video. Speed limit info. Do you want to see it or not? I want to see it. Others. Seems like we're close to the end. Audio display or map. S small step zoom by dial. Ooh, map scrolling information. Address book icons. Destination waypoints. What they call an address book is what you've saved as your address. Well, I guess it is exactly that. Addresses, you know. Uh, do you want the latitude, longitude info? I don't. So pretty cool customized Nerva places. You could do that as well. Restaurant, gas station, whatever you want to usually see. These are shortcuts. Keyboard type, I actually change this. I usually change this almost immediately. ABC is the standard one and I just find it really hard to type with ABC. So change it to the QWERTY keypad. So you can change that. Under settings, navigation settings, other. Crazy way. North up when zoomed out, yes. You know, when you're so far out, you don't want north to be this way. It kind of gets disorienting. Then adjust the current location, correct the vehicle position and direction of map. If you're ever in a situation where you, you know, you pull the map, then you just see your vehicle going round and round or your map going round and round, this is where you want to get to and then change that. Okay, settings. That's, that's under others. There's still... Deletes toward items, that's addresses, previous destinations, if you want to. Let me see. Well, when you do that, it just asks you whether you want to do a yes or no. And I don't really know what to delete previous start points. You could save a start point too. Reset all navigation settings to default. Nope, not today. Okay, wow, look at that. Audio. This is going to be pretty easy. Your base treble you know what let me play something from my let me play my own my own music i do have something that a pretty talented dude made for me so i usually just play my own music let's play with let's turn this to bluetooth there you go so setting audio you could well there you go Select it first. When you see it, change color. There's a base. Treble. Balance. I, I don't know if that's carrying into the front, back. Speed sensitive volume. Mine's at max. Basically, you increase your speed, the volume goes up as well. You could turn it all the way off. It depends on where the red is. Mine's all the way at max. Dri driver's audio stage on. Just I turned it off right now. So this, I guess at this point, music just goes into the vehicle. But as you can see, this optimizes acoustics for the driver. It changes a little bit. You need the right music to hear it. I've never really been able to play with that. I don't know what it does, but the registration number for the player, that's something. There you go. Display album uh, cover art. So if you've got um, CDs or USB, you know, it's going to play from there. Okay, let me pause this. Okay, that's pretty much it for audio. For phone, quick dial. Uh, down, you know, uh, that's what we used to call a speed dial, right? Download the phone book from my phone. Volume and ringtone. You can set how how loud it's gonna be when it 
when it rings, incoming call, how loud is it going to be, outgoing call, you know, your ring back tone, so to say, automatic hold or no. Do you want a vehicle ringtone or yours? And um, I'm sorry, I only have one phone right now capable of doing this call thing, so we'll do that. Auto downloaded my phone book, that is, I'm guessing. That's on. We'll let it be. Bluetooth adds or edits the Bluetooth phones and audio devices. And I already did a video on that, right? So is it on or off? You can turn it off. Connect Bluetooth, you know, hands-free phone system. I know they tell you you're either doing it for phone or music, but it seems like it works regardless. Connected devices tells you all the different phones. Let me see. So, sorry, meant connected devices, hands-free phone versus audio player. Yeah, all these guys, wherever they are. Ken, Andy, and then me. <laughs> Same ones we have on the hands-free phone. Ken, Andy, and I. So you can do five. Uh, edit Bluetooth info. You could change the pin. Well, I guess device address. I don't know what you're gonna do with all the information you saw. You could change the name to... See, now I went to the QWERTY, you know, typing. Otherwise, it'd just be a mess trying to do that. So let me delete this. QX70. Or you could do it this way, you know, select things, but okay, it is. We're perfect, there you go. So it's going to show up on my phone as QX70 connected. Well, never mind. Still shows my car, but maybe I need to disconnect it. Then reconnect it again. Nope, still says my car. Oh well, we know what it is. Settings. Bluetooth, we're getting there, we're getting there. Did I finish changing the name? Ah, what happened? I thought I hit okay there. There you go, that explains. Sometimes I use a combination of all those. See the diagonal move? <laughs> so it's got its places. it needs okay here as well there you go maybe maybe I don't know I just connected Bluetooth connect it again it's probably getting all kinds of crazy there you go see now it says QX70 finally I guess I just needed to hit that twice setting Bluetooth uh, replace connected phone. You could do that as well. Volume and beeps. Audio volume. Oh, that's crazy. I guess it's like, is this more an additional to the uh, to the audio stuff? So if you have it all the way at max, let's just do this. Okay, dude, get to that. It's going so slowly. I'm going to play the music that I've been playing just right now. Let's see how loud it's going to be. Whoa, yep, I guess we have our answer. We have our answer. Whoa, that's that's crazy. See, the other ones don't have that. Not, not to that level. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, so it is just basically boosting your your audio stuff guidance volume how loud do you want it to be do you want it interrupting your music or not softer louder louder whoa softer louder louder yeah i think it was right where it needs to be ringtone bluetooth stuff or the phone stuff incoming call 
guess we'll leave it at that. The outgoing call, that's usually the most irritating. When you're calling somebody and someone is standing outside your car, they can hear the, you know. So I'm going call, just have it low-ish. Okay, what else? Switch beeps. There you go. Do you hear it? See the difference? And that beep when a button is pushed. Guidance voice, do you want it on or off? So you could turn it off in many different ways. Go back, driver assistance. Now this is where the dynamic assistance features, you know, the, the car with a circle thing on, on my vehicle. Let me show you what that is. Well, let me just do the, yeah, let me show you first. Okay, this button right here. Yeah, that's the dynamic assistance button. You see it come on over there. So when you push this one here, it's active versus this one here. Uh, here, this is just sound. Is it just going to, is it going to warn you whenever it comes across a line? So there's a little bit of a difference there. Okay, so these are the features we're talking about here. Do you want distance control assist? Do you want it to automatically break when you're creeping up in traffic? They previously called that for collision warning in a way. It's combined in there. Now, lane departure, do you want to turn it off? You've seen it in my Infinity FX50, FX50 video that I had different buttons I could, I could push on and off. In this one, it's, it's hidden in a menu item. All right, then the display. What do you want to do with the display? The theme, I went with brown, but you could go to black. It's changing. Or silver. Hmm, doesn't look very impressive. <laughs> I'll just go back to brown. Silver is very mild in this vehicle. Okay, go back. Uh, display adjustment. Now, I've shown you guys this in a different video. Uh, you can turn the display off. And it says push the you know day night switch to turn it back on. You could do this. I, I thought you could. Well, let's say status just for example. But in a little while, it's going to go off. There you go. So it's one way if you're driving at night and you get irritated. That might be a nice setting. If you want it to come back on, you could go back to the settings and you know display or. Just sit and wait. See, let it go back off. And you'll see what happens. So push the switch. It's resuming display. And that happens even when you turn off the vehicle. It remembers what you asked it to do. So that's pretty cool. I know this is really deep and looks like we're like almost 40, 40 minutes in right now. But hey, you requested. Adjustment. Background color. See that? And but then it changes the modes automatically. Auto. You see that? Brightness, contrast. Daytime brightness and contrast. Okay, so background color. Uh, you want it like that or you want it like that? Let's go with bright. This That looks like nighttime stuff. I'll leave it at that go back others always love others but wait there's more so comfort that's where i showed you guys you could change things like um auto interior illumination you can turn this off and what that does is that when it gets dark I, yeah kevin oh that's kevin lighting when unlocking doors you can turn that off if you don't like it or you could let me look at the switch. Yeah, you could turn the switch off because the switch up there, the one, oh, let me show you the switch too. <laughs> and that's for unlocking. So you've got on, door, and off. But apparently you could do it over here too. So I'm just gonna go to on. Light sensitivity is how, how fast do you want your vehicle to react to, or how, yeah, how fast do you want it to react 
you know, that's four headlights turning on and off automatically. Or, you know, if it's just barely dark, do you want your headlights to be on or do you want it to get like really, really dark? Okay. Uh, light off delay. Mine, my headlights stay on for 30 seconds after being shut off. You could change that to zero, 30, 45, 130, or 60, then 90. Yeah. Then two minutes. Wow. If you got battery life, I guess. 30 is a decent compromise for me. Select door and lock. I usually leave that off. That is a setting. All doors with one click. Nice way to put it. Intelligent key and lock. Some, you have an intelligent key and you turn it off. It's kind of funky. But hey, different strokes for different form. Lift steering wheel and exit. I usually turn that off just to prevent wear. Slide in the driver's seat back on exit. I turn that off as well. And then return everything to default if you so please. Clock. Do you want it on or off? 24 hour or 12? Um, okay, let's do that. You can, if you've got DVD navigation, right? That's why you have the digital one, otherwise you wouldn't. I usually like it there. Format. Now it doesn't give you the definition, so I guess I'll tell you. Offset hour. Do you want to manually force it to show one hour ahead or maybe you're driving an east i know some people like uh, i have a co-worker he lives in illinois but he works in indiana with me so his clocks his wall you know in his house everything basically relates to eastern time that's where the the line is so maybe something like that you want to do that and you could go backwards or forwards so right now it's 8 42 say i live i lived in indiana and i did all my business in illinois maybe i want to change this to negative so it's always showing me Illinois time and you can also do it for minutes if you live in one of those places that are divided by 15 minutes right daylight savings time on or off if this were not daylight savings time it would be 742 in Indiana time zone Eastern you usually have to go in to pick whatever you want but Eastern it is okay that's that's it that's it for the clock language and units English, Francais, Espanol, whatever you want. Uh, US units versus metric, if you're a sensible person. Tab pressure, you did see that when I did the info thing, right? So some of these have many different ways to come around and do the same thing. Uh, voice recognition, user guide. I think I usually actually like this one here. Review the expanded command list. Some commands will be replaced and voice menu prompts turned off. Do you wish to proceed with this mode? I can't remember what they, let's see. So on, right? Let's see what happens. No route has been set. I'm going to hit the speak button over here. Please say call followed by a phone book name or uh, say a category. Audio just needs a whole different video for it. Yep, voice recognition, I'll get it back to normal. Uh, there's a user guide, right? Which, practice, you did see that. We can help on speaking. There's, go back. I feel like I saw this somewhere here. Was it on language and units? We already did that. I feel like I missed something. Oh, camera, now here we are. I did a whole video on camera but I'm going to show you what this is about predictive course lines this is let me hit camera button over here okay so these right here these are the predictive course lines it's telling you this is where your vehicle is bound to go if you try to go but this one right here is where it's actually going to end up so this is where you're trying to take your vehicle but this is where it's actually going to go okay just as an example and we've got some for the rear as well. You see it's telling you front versus rear. So this is where you're trying to take your vehicle, but this is where your vehicle actually is going to go. And it doesn't have the best lighting. It's not the most, the best resolution for daytime viewing. It's not very clear. It looks like an old gaming system, but it's actually pretty good for nighttime viewing. So it's an interesting balance they had to keep. So that's rear. You could change the view for the rear from this one and this one, right? 
360 degree view. This one shows you your right tire, your right wheel, and I showed you guys that video. I have a video on that. Sorry, I made that. Okay, then change view again. This is wide, showing you everything in the back. I can see my M56, I can see the side. And this right here, uh, I've shown this in a different video. This is just parking, you have parking sensors. If I back up, listen to this. Do you see that? <laughs> All right, and look at that, showing me the front. wide as well isn't that nice mod is moving object detection if a kid or yeah usually a kid crosses it does something you know sonar and i believe it breaks as well it should have automatic emergency braking if i remember correctly so that's why it changed the view goes back to normal so yeah and so here's an interesting thing now that we're dealing with the let me turn the light on now that we're dealing with the Whoa, this light is not working for us, is it? Yeah, now that we're dealing with the camera button here, when you get to camera, you can hit setting and you can change a few settings here. So one, the display, what do you want it to look like? How bright should it be? Tint, color, it's pretty much in the middle, so I just leave it there. Contrast, how, how, how do you want it to look like? Black level, I just have everything in the middle. You see that, the middle mark? Okay, so there's that. And then there is, uh, go back, settings. Predictive course lines. Remember that setting part we were on? Yeah, let me pull this down. This is where we were on the camera, right? Shut the camera off setting I can't remember if I could do diagonal with this no I could not okay <laughs> I was gonna try to go diagonal but it's actually not too bad go setting then back up it goes to the other one okay camera predictive course lines I already showed you what they are camera view priority now look at that the first screen what do you want it to be do you want it to be uh, the top view second screen a side view you know third screen wide view so basically when you push this what's the first screen that you see you want the top of the vehicle you know then when you push this you want to see the side or you want to see wide so you can change whatever you want to see there and you had what one to three options i wonder if you can actually have like top then top again <laughs> Uh, see now it changes depending on what you do it changes it says whatever you haven't distributed i'm going to push it somewhere else so that's that's nice right okay um non viewable area reminder this is the first time you turn on your vehicle oh, i'll show you this you can turn it off turn it on and i've shown this in a different video but let me turn the vehicle turn this off and back on this is why my gas fuel economy is crap right now, by the way, just so you know. Okay, do this. You see this yellow area right there? It's just reminding you that we can't see that. Then disappears, it becomes black. So that's that's what that non-viewable area is. See that wide, right? So first, hit the camera, top, right? Then two, side, this is the side of the car, right? You see the wheel? Then three, all wide. So that is that priority that was showing up earlier. Then go back to setting. We're almost there, guys. And girls. Camera. Uh, moving object detection. You can turn that off. But, you know, in a round view monitor mode, do you see, can you see that? Sonar, you could turn that off. Again, I've got a video where I was, oh, I, it was actually a very short video. I did it for somebody, but just showing you how the sonar works, you can turn it off here, right? These two things, you can turn them off here, 
or well, there's more oh there's towing mode look at that isn't that nice activate towing mode which disables the rear sonar which means you're not going to keep sensing your um your trailer okay show camera when sonar activates that's an interesting one and i'll show that in a bit sonar sensitivity you want in middle a little too sensitive how do you want it so i can turn those things off here but let's go to camera so i've got my sonar on right now and typically when going forward the camera does not activate but watch this you'll see something come up i'm moving i'm moving i'm moving there you go so close to that m45 right there and then the camera just came on which is really cool so it lets you know hey we've got a problem over here and you can turn sonar and well turn it on you can turn it off so you can just go hit it you can turn it back on and you see mod's there moving object detection and you can see it over there as well so pretty cool let's say it's pretty cool so that's what that feature is about right now. You know? okay, so let's go ahead and park it. This is a very detailed video. I didn't know how long it was gonna be. It's almost coming to the levels of my forest air video. <laughs> I was like one and a half hours. Difference, no editing in this one. What you get, what you see is what you get, you know? Or what you get is what you see. <laughs> All right, camera, are we done? Yeah, we are. Excuse me. Uh, image viewer. If you've got USB stick, you can watch pictures there, I guess. I don't know what you're doing. Then here's the other stuff. We'll go back. We're done with that screen. Pretty much everything in setting has been explored. Then you've got destination, route, and map. Remember how interesting it is? You've got a map which shows you things. You can zoom in, zoom out zoom in all the way in right 32 is like the, the smallest whoa we're all the way in there zoom out um, that's just that you could go to route if you've got something going on guidance settings because we don't have any destinations set I should have gone look at map destination you could enter it manually you could go home you could pick something from your address book you could pick a previous destination Yes, some people's address, that's not me. So I'm going to kind of hide that. You could delete destinations, you know. You could, what's in the next page? Previous start points, toward routes, phone number, freeway entrance, if you, intersection, city center. It's interesting, this is so much stuff. Places by a category, right? ATM, I think is usually one of those, nearby ATM. It's searching. Chase in Terre Haute, Indiana. So there's, well, there's quite a lot of features over here. There are quite a lot of features. Oh, let's go back to destination. You could change the region because that's usually important. So you need to know a little bit of geography going on whenever you do that. And I guess Canada, they give you guys the entire nation. They gave you number 11 <laughs> out of 13. Okay. So now once you pick a destination, you can, let's, let's actually do that. I'm going to block this, I'm sorry. Let's go with previous destination. I'm trying to protect people's, you can pick by date, by name. So there you go, calculating. Oh, I know what happened, I picked something in Terre Haute. That was me that put that, I think. <laughs> so you can start you could store the location starting the route guidance to your destination continue on the current route you see that so it gives you that's that's the stuff I was talking about earlier and what else do we need to do so now with all that going on now I can go to route a route you can recalculate you can add something to your route uh, guidance settings, you can turn the, the volume off if you don't want to hear the voice. Traffic announcements, kind of takes us back to that navigation stuff. So this right here is navigation, okay? Uh, you can cancel the route. Cancel it, yes. 
pausing it, then canceling it. Boom. And with that, there's really nothing to show, right? You could resume it because it's still kind of fresh, but nothing else. Changes the default routing method for detailed settings. Recalculate something in case you didn't like something about it. Fastest route kind of goes back there. Other routing choices. Time restricted roads, statistical. That's interesting. See, now I didn't even see that. You can minimize toll roads if you're on the highway. Use avoid area settings or not, in that you could have um, avoid areas, but then you choose not to use it over here. Avoids traffic based on the XM traffic service. That's why I said I've got satellites. Use ferries. Huh, nice. Learned routes. Oh, isn't that smart? Auto reroute on. So, yeah, quite a lot of stuff over here, guys. Quite a lot of stuff. And um, I hope I've kind of covered the whole menu panel in under an hour. This is not too bad. You know, you've seen what the camera can do. You've seen what everything else can do over here. And I'd say pretty successful day. Um, if you need more information, more time, or a deeper dive into any one of these features, yeah, please free, free, uh, feel free to reach out to me. But I'd say for all intents and purposes, we should be good. So if you want to do music, just go ahead and hit that. You can play it. Not really. I guess if I, I'd forgotten, you usually have to play it from here. Your phone kind of kickstarts it, you know? But yeah, so I think it's pretty interesting. You get to learn your vehicle quite a lot. For me, it's pretty easy. And even without someone doing a video like this, I suppose I would be able to stumble my way around because I've been around Nissans and Infinities for such a long time. But uh, let's say this video is dedicated to Tom. Because <laughs> uh, Tom is the one that said, show me everything on that screen. I want to know everything you can do. Someone else did ask, uh, could you show me what the setting button does? Where's the setting menu? So it depends on what exactly you're trying to go to. Yes, this one takes you to almost everything behind menus. But sometimes when you're in the camera mode, it can take you home as well. Okay? This is long. I know that. If you've been watching it for all this time, I really appreciate you sticking with me. Um... I do this stuff for you guys because as you can tell kind of i'd say 98 percent knowledgeable in what <laughs> in what is here so this is meant to be for your benefit and i hope again like i've done with other videos recently i hope i did not miss the mark please share in the comments why you were watching this video you watching because you're a supporter and you just like watching my stuff i appreciate that are you watching because you're curious or curious about you know what what i'm up to this time or are you watching because this is a buying guide or you're using this as a buying guide as to what your vehicles can do, okay? So many different um, different purposes, none of them wrong is what I wanted to say, but in a bit uh, or other sometime in the future, we'll be dealing with all the other buttons, those over there, those over there, and all these over here will do those while driving, okay? All right, all the best. Uh, I need to get inside and prepare for the day. Yeah, for the night, for the evening.